After the inspectors were finished, the road was finally repaved, so traffic flows again, and this monument was put up in Hariri's honor. But now the commission faces the formidable task of trying to find the truth in the highly politicized environment here. And even if they get at what really happened, some here think the commission will be under pressure not to reveal those findings because they might implicate some governments. Beyond Lebanon's anti-Syrian camp, few blame Damascus directly for Hariri's murder, though it was implicit in how it was shunned by other nations. Recently, that changed. Syria's President Bashar al-Assad was re-engaged. Cynics here say it all smells of a deal, a plea bargain of sorts to protect the Syrian regime from prosecution and avoid regional instability. Some people have gone as far as saying because of political machinations, who actually gets indicted in the end is out of the Commission's hands. How do you react to that? <laughs> well, I can tell you that I'm the only one who will decide who gets indicted. And my decision will be based on the one thing and the one thing only, will be based on the evidence. I will indict when I'm ready to do so, not one minute earlier and not one minute later. Your decisions, your indictments, your prosecution, that tribunal could change the face of this region. Well, I'm very conscious of the fact that there are very heavy responsibilities that I've been put on my shoulders. And I can assure people that the decisions that are made are made cautiously, professionally, and more importantly, on a principled basis. That's why public appearances like this are so rare. And even then, only cameras are allowed, no audio. Since he took over, Belmar has been mum on his progress. The media here try hard to speculate or, at best, attack him for taking so long to find answers. It's much quicker to blow someone up than to put the pieces together. Of course, we're making progress, but there's nothing that I can talk about, unfortunately. While many here now dismiss the investigation, some officials, like the Prime Minister, still believe it will eventually expose the killers. Very essential for our democracy, this country to stay as a country of tolerance, openness, freedom. That's all the motivation Belmar needs to go on, to now take on the job of chief prosecutor in the Hariri case. A case that will eventually be heard at The Hague, away from the dangers of Lebanon. What a beautiful day. Gorgeous. You see the sky? Not one cloud in the sky. Yet still under extraordinary security and still far away from home. I think that to put an end to impunity, to allow the Lebanese people to believe in a system of justice, that if you commit a crime, you will pay the price. I think this is an ideal that's worth fighting for. Belmar left Lebanon for The Hague on February 28th, probably under a false name to protect his identity. Left behind, Lebanon waits. The Middle East is so rich. And um, who is it, for sure? But danger won't be too far behind. It will always be his constant companion. Nala joins us now from Beirut. Nala, an amazing story. How dangerous, how difficult was it for you to get it? Well, Peter, after more than four years of covering these bombings and assassinations, it was a bit unsettling to be riding in one of these convoys myself. You know, your perspective changes entirely. Every car you see becomes a potential bomb, and around every corner is a potential threat. You know, what really brought it home for me, though, was an exchange I had the night before we were riding with Belmar. It was a security uh, person who told me that essentially if something happened, I was going to be on my own. And aside from pointing out where the, uh, the flak jacket and the helmet were, he advised me just to follow Belmar as he's being moved to safety. So it was a bit of a, an unnerving feeling for me, much like it was for Belmar himself when he first arrived. He told me a story about wanting to go shopping one day. He went, wanted to go downtown, and um, they took him there. And he was kind of surprised that there were really no people around until he found out that, in fact, they had sealed the entire area for his own safety. That really brought home to him just how much at risk his life was. And so after that, he decided to limit his movements. He said not just for his own sake, 
but for the sake of those who protect him. In his own words, he said to me that if he is blown up, then they will be blown up too. Peter. Uh -huh. All right, Nala. Thank you. Nala Ayad in Beirut tonight.